All right, well, we can kick off. Um, welcome to uh, KPIs, Every Legal Team Should Track in 2023. Um, my name is Samantha Nickerson. I'm a technical solutions attorney at Link Squares, and I'm joined by Jonathan Greenblatt and Brittany Wayne. I'll let them introduce themselves in just a moment. Um, but want to kick off this webinar, what we're going to talk about today is tracking data and KPIs that actually make sense for your legal team. Um, so without further ado, um, I'll pass it off to Jonathan, our VP of Legal at Link Squares, to introduce himself, uh, and then I'll, I'll let Brittany follow up. Thanks, Samantha. My name is Jonathan Greenblatt. I, I am the VP of Legal at Link Squares. I've worked in-house for about 13 years, so I know the importance of tracking metrics and KPIs that actually make sense for the legal organization. So very happy to, to be here today to have this, this discussion. Perfect. Do you want to introduce yourself, Brittany? Yes. Uh, thank you both. Uh, my name is Brittany Wayne. I'm commercial counsel here at Link Squares and uh, also co chair of the metrics and analytic group of uh, the ACC Association of Corporate Counsel. So uh, I love talking about data and how legal teams can use them. Awesome. Yeah. Excited to hear from you both. I know we get to work together all the time, um, but it's always nice to hear just insights about um, a topic like data. So um, just to set a quick agenda for what we're going to cover on this webinar, really every day what we hear and what I hear from specifically in my role at Link Squares is from legal teams that either aren't aware of their process at all or are just spending far too much time trying to manually really track their efficiency and track and measure their effectiveness to the business. Um, of course, this matters in, in light of uh, just the regular uh, task of, of being an in-house counsel. And of course, in light of the current state of the world and of the market um, in legal, we obviously want to prevent revenue leakage, be a real partner to the business, um, maybe now more than ever. So um, in this little chat, we're going to discuss, again, data and KPIs that really make sense to be aware of and to prioritize uh, in, in terms of your role. And then also we'll save time for a few questions at the end as well. Um, so yeah, again, um, every day we hear the same problems just to tee up why this matters. Um, what we want to do is, is in this time, emphasize that tracking data is the pain point for all legal departments, big or small, uh, in a growth stage, in a shrink stage, uh, in, in any form of, of major event. So um, again, being aware of your effectiveness and your efficiency um, is, is, is super important. Um, it's something that we want to, um, again, just prioritize so that we can optimize really our function um, in that in-house role. So Jonathan and, and, and or Brittany, um, feel free to just speak to the lack of data-driven insights and what that can mean for a business, whether that's something that you've seen in, in your current role or, of course, in any former roles as well. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to start. So most of my roles throughout my career have had zero data components associated with them, which essentially meant all of the work that I was doing was not having any sort of number associated with it that was going up the chain in the organization to provide visibility to the other business stakeholders about like what we were doing in, in legal. And so when you have that effect, essentially legal becomes the this black box. And the thing that Link Squares what we're trying to accomplish is we want to elevate the status of the legal organization. And the way to do this is through data. Remove the black box, provide transparency to other state business stakeholders. And there are a lot of benefits to which we can discuss later on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I'm looking at these bullet points here. And um, I also come from previous roles that didn't have a, a CLM tool. And so it's, it's wonderful having this tool where you know you're busy and you can tell others that you're busy and everyone knows that the legal team and different teams are busy, but to have the data showing what made them busy, what kinds of contracts, how many contracts, how long each of those took um, is really invaluable. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, you know, in light of that, and especially Jonathan and Brittany, as the two of you work with Tim, our chief legal officer, how do you all view the importance of tracking that data, especially when you parse out the different teams, whether it be legal, finance, you know, even legal ops? Um, you know, I'm sure both of you would, would want to speak to that one. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think we view this as critical, right? This is what is giving us insight into the day-to-day -day legal performance, particularly on the contract level. Um, and this is allowing us to sort of understand the volumes of work that's coming in, the turnaround times that are that we're achieving as an organization. Are we keeping up with the metrics that our, our business partners expect? Um, and this is allowing us to also provide like KPIs that make sense, as we sort of talk about at the beginning, um, rather than sort of making up um, achievements that the legal team can do so we can sort of check a box for the business organization. We know what our fundamental role is here, and we know that we spend a lot of times working on contracts and that we can now provide that visibility as to what our actual metrics are on the contracts that we can now provide this to the rest of the org. Yeah, definitely. In that in that vein, do you think there are KPIs that make less sense or that 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 aren't of value in in terms of um, their priority and and what they represent? Yeah, absolutely. I think KPIs that might be driven by other business units might not make quite sense for the legal department. Oftentimes, there will be expectations that that the legal department will come up with some metric that that aligns to what other departments, like the engineering department are doing, for instance, at a software company. Mm -hmm. And for legal to say that, no, look, we actually have our own metrics that are gonna tell us our own insights. And we're gonna not only report to you what that actual data is, but why this is important and how we can make decisions based off of that, I think is invaluable. Further, a lot of organizations will take, in, in, the, in an effort to be able to come to the leadership team with a KPI, they'll come up with some projects that are probably actually less important for the organization. Um, but legal needs to have some sort of metric or KPI to meet. So what they will do is propose projects that are sort of meaningless um, and do, don't really get to what the legal team is, is really there to do. Um, and for a lot of legal teams, that is like keeping the contract flow um, reviewed and worked through on a very timely basis. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, Brittany, anything to add there in, in terms of, um, you know, what, what we're just discussing about the, the data that actually makes sense? Yeah, um, I, I think tracking the data points on, on the specific contracts that legal works on um, is so important to showcase value, especially because for the legal team especially because I think in some organizations, legal teams are seen as um, an expense rather than something to help grow the business and move business along. And so to monitor the, the rate of the legal portfolio growth, like this says, um, is so useful. I know us um, as a team within Lynx, whereas we track um, the number of contracts and turnaround time we mo I monitor, we all monitor that by week, by month, by quarter, and we can even compare for this November, for example, compared to last year's November. So for growing companies um, and companies that are always evolving, um, it, it can really highlight um, the benefits of having a legal team and their value. Yeah, definitely. And and happy to really brag on the two of you for Link Squares as we've just had a hyper growth year, really doubling the size of our company, it's been vital to that success and to that growth to bring, you know, you, Brittany, onto the team and to bring our other um, commercial counsel, Ashlyn, onto the team. And even in the, you know, olden days before I was ever at Link Squares, back when um, Tim, our, our CLO, was a legal team of one, it was really through data and and data that actually mattered that was able to really justify that expansion um, of of the legal function, uh, which is just tremendous because then it allows Tim to focus elsewhere and Jonathan to focus elsewhere as you bolster the support of the of the core function, of course, which is getting new contracts signed. But there's also um, lots of other functions that are very important um, to to your role and and having that visibility into where not only the business is spending time, money, and resources, but where it should be uh, in, in pace with that growth is is really important as well. Um, great. So uh, Absolutely, we... Sam. And I, I'd just like to sort of chime in. I think that's, I mean, that shows goes to show you what, what 
using KPIs and metrics that matter can do for your organization. If you are just there to check a box, um, that's not going to give you insights that are going to allow you to make justifications to your management team as to why you need to expand the legal team. If you can pull data that shows what your legal team is doing, how their how the work is expanding, and why you need more resources to be able to continue with the pace, and what's the outcome if you don't have those resources, now we're talking about KPIs that make sense. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, I may have gotten ahead of myself and, and skipped to the next slide, but I, I think I was just really excited to show it because of the tagline. I think broadly being aware of how busy you are um, is what, well, one, uh, legal teams and, and attorneys in general, people in, in sales, people in our office in general are just always talking about how busy we are. Um, and with that, you know, broad awareness of that data of those KPIs, it's, you know, now quantifiable. How busy are we really? Um, when we spoke before this, um, Jonathan, you mentioned broadly that the KPIs that are relevant really for legal teams are how many contracts you're working with, how long those contracts are sitting in um, the hands of, of their drafters and their reviewers and negotiators. And then, you know, with who is the contract kind of spending the majority of that time. Um, and then again, other metrics that that were represented here. Um, this understanding, of course, is, is vital. Um, and so, you know, in, in terms of the two of you and, and working with our own platform at LinkSquares, um, would love to hear from, from both of you speaking about working with Finalize internally and, and the data that's that's revealed to you about um, your own efficiency there. Sure. So I'd love to talk about sort of these these different questions that get answered, and I think the how many is extremely important for understanding your your first like what your resources their capabilities, um, because there is a lot of budget being spent at Link Squares as with rest of the comp um, you know every other company that has a legal department like for that legal department. So being able to quantify first, what is the workload? And I think when you sort of ask those questions, how busy are we? What is our workload? That's when you go to the data, right? Understanding how many agreements are being worked on is extremely important. Um, but you know, that is, that is a great high level data point. But as you're trying to drill down, there's other, other considerations that you wanna to look at. So for instance, um, are you working off of your paper or an external party's paper? Well, you know, if I know I'm working mostly off of my paper, then arguably there's probably less work that's going into to our paper than to reviewing a third party's paper. So that gives me another, another indicator as to what how busy is my team. So we know the no total number of contracts we work on. We know the breakout between, is it our paper? Is it another party's paper, like what is the type of agreement? Um, if you are working on specific types of agreements, I think NDAs come to mind for a lot of legal departments because they're usually a high volume of them. Um, those take a, a certain amount of time, but if you're negotiating, for instance, a master services agreement, you know the time expectation on the master services agreement is probably going to be a little bit more than the NDA and the, also the importance to your organization. So you want to be able to try to figure out what is the sort of complexity and the level of effort that needs to go in to working on, on my contracts. Um, so you have that total number data set. You now can start breaking it out to internal, external, um, what types of agreements. Uh, also, if you know that you're getting a number of agreements of a certain type, for instance, you have a company that has a, a, an increasing real estate portfolio. And you now know specific numbers as to how many real estate contracts you're getting in. Maybe you're the general counsel of that, that org and you're trying to make a decision as to what is my next hire? Well, you know what? The data is probably telling you if it's an increasing amount of real estate contracts that maybe your next hire should be somebody with real estate experience. And maybe you train them on the rest of the uh, rest of the, the parts of the business that, that your organization deals with. Uh, but maybe you need that specialty with somebody who comes in with a real estate specialty. So being able to sort of break down the, the volume of agreements by agreement types and complexity is extremely important to make those actionable decisions. Yeah, that's great. That's a that's a great perspective because it's it really is driving 
decisions in in the business and and how we want to grow with purpose with full understanding about what our needs are and, and where we want to be um Brittany I want to I want to ask you a question just about legal ops in terms in in and in this real vein of of efficiency and, and optimization um what are some of the the things that you've heard just in 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 your role um and and in interest in um the metrics and analytics uh, piece? Sure. So I think a lot of companies, it's, it's that very basic question, but there's so much to it of what kinds of contracts do we have? That How many have we signed? The kinds of contracts that they are. This happens a lot for companies who have um, gone through a merger or um, acquired a company. And so they gain a lot of legacy agreements. And I think a lot of companies are very interested in running um, the dashboards without manually going through each contract because there really isn't time for that to see, for example, how many of our contracts have a certain provision that lines up with that company's um, stance, let's say on, on assignment or on indemnity or whichever um, clauses are really important. So to gain insight and not be so in the dark about what contracts they're inheriting and also, um, as companies grow and become more organized, to know, to be able to track how contracts were done in the past, which terms, which version of terms were worked on in the past compared to now, and looking at like what Jonathan said about turnaround times and being able to compare how long, for example, a master services agreement used to take compared to now um, really helps. Uh, determine how efficient the legal team is. Um, these data points also help showcase which departments legal works with the most within an organization uh, by being able to break down the dashboards by um, template type. So um, we can, for example, look at how many marketing agreements. So even just within master services agreement, how many of those were for marketing? How many of those were uh, for our own product, uh, selling that and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, in that vein, Brittany, you mentioned dashboards and, and I think that will take us to the, the next slide. How important is it for this data to be represented visually instead of just in a, you know, a typed out report? This is, this is where we're spending our time and spending our resources. I think it's a lot easier to process, especially for those, um, you know, attorneys. We're all reading uh, reports and contracts in some sort of form, uh, fine print all day. And so to be able to see it broken down, for example, in uh, a pie chart or these different graphs um, help absorb, help me at least absorb the data um, in a more bigger picture way rather than just reading percentages or numbers. Um, also, it helps um, contextualize how different time periods went, whether it be by a, a week or a month, to be able to look at the visuals instead of just reading, oh, it was this many contracts versus that many contracts uh, in one month or another. Um, it it helps form a bigger picture. Yeah, definitely. And, and even in terms of Collab, like working with other departments, whether it be in a collaboration sense or in a, um, you know, in advocating sense, like you want something in legal and you need to go ask finance or, you know, another uh, cross department um, project. I think having a visual and um, whether you're an attorney or whether you're not, um, almost like describing what somebody looks like rather than showing them just a picture. Hey, this is what this person look like. looks like. This is our process um, and all of the angles and all of the um, things that are great and things that are not great. Um, really a, a visual demonstration of that value. Um, again, that data in, uh, in terms of efficiency in particular, it's more ideal, right? That it's being tracked automatically as opposed to something that you're going in and time stamping or, you know, uh, even, you know, the pain of billable hours that uh, doesn't touch the, the in-house teams anymore, but 
that pain can get replaced if it's now a manual process of tracking efficiency and KPIs and time here versus time there. Um, yeah, you know, and I'd, I would also yeah, add ahead. that that at the you know the GC level, chief legal officer level, there's not a lot of time to sift through these analytics. So being able to provide a report to the GC or the CLO that is easy to digest for that person is extremely valuable because a lot of times in as legal departments grow and for the larger legal departments, it's usually going to be somebody who's probably in that sort of middle management area that is going to be the one providing that information to the upper management chain, the GC, the deputy GC. And given their time constraints, being able to communicate that quickly and efficiently is extremely important and you can't do it any better than with visuals. Definitely. And, you know, in, in terms of even what's on the, on the PowerPoint, shattering the reputation of legal being a bottleneck. I think that is unfortunately such a stereotype that agreements are stuck in legal and, oh, it's all legal's fault that this <clears throat> contract isn't getting signed or that the terms are being negotiated right at the last minute. So having um, kind of this visual, just very sure <laughs> representation and even justification that, hey, maybe the contract isn't stuck in legal um, and, and kind of addressing and, and crushing as, as much as is possible that stereotype there. Well, I think it also helps you answer the question, is legal being a bottleneck? Because maybe the answer is yes. And maybe the solution is, hey, I need more resources. Maybe the solution is maybe my resources aren't being efficient. Maybe my solution is, I need to talk to my management team because with this level of resourcing, this is this is the output we can do. And these are the turnaround times. And again, having those visuals be able to help tell that story um, as to like, is legal being a bottleneck, which is I think a question and, and something um, legal departments all over want to answer. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's extremely important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, so I'll second that to be able to take um, teams and companies out of the dark and of just having a perception of legal teams and how busy each team or com is within a company to be able to see it visually on your screen um, and to be able to personalize it to whatever time frame um, or even team member you you want to see the visuals for it really just takes you out of the dark and and have that data right in front of you um, to showcase whoever want to whoever wants to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of connecting what matters to legal versus what matters to the business and like data that not only makes sense for legal to be aware of in, in terms of that accountability, but also that makes sense when you're representing it externally to the other members of the business. Um, so yeah, that's, that's great. Um, any more insights from the two of you that you want to share just about best practices um, even even lessons learned in your time being at Link Squares and the way that our CLM is, um, you know, kind of working to to build more helpful um, pieces of data and, and pieces of of, of visual uh, representations of of those processes. Um, happy again to turn the mic back to you guys about best practices. Yeah, I think there's a lot of value that can be pulled from our the default dashboards at, at Link Squares. Um, and I think we've been able to sort of take that data and to be able to use it for our needs. Every organization is going to have a different need and different use cases that they're going to want to be able to take the data and um, report out on. And so um, I think figuring out what you want to report out and then for Link Squares customers, you know, coming in and seeing what's available in the default, but also talking to your CS rep about what's available in custom dashboards is very helpful. There's a ton of valuable data. Uh, we recently worked on a, a project to get better data based on state. And so therefore we um, now can report out on, on specific states, which is critical to our to our reporting to be able to know how much is sort of with us or, or with a counterparty. And so um, I think um, just figuring out how um, link squares or sort of any data source, always thinking about how do you answer the high level questions? Because the data is usually there. It's just very easy in link squares. 
but it, the data is there. And so just figuring out what are the questions you want to ask and what are you trying to answer, I think will, we'll, and then sort of figuring out the data points you collect and then sort of backing into that, I think um, is, is something that I've taken away here at Link Squares. Absolutely. And, and I use um, the dashboards and um, the whole suite really for trying to improve my reporting on, of course, what's been done, but also what's being worked on currently. And I see this zoomed in picture here of the different statuses. And that really helps when uploading a document, um, having after I we work on it, having it automatically go into counterparty review and eliminating that manual step of whatever a pro process a company might currently have, whether that's um, writing it down on a notepad, the contracts they're working on, or in some uh, um, tool in Microsoft or in a CLM, it just eliminates those manual steps and helps organize what a report on what's being worked on by whom and who, Whose ball the court, uh, whose court? Excuse me, the ball is in. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think one other thing I would add, Sam, is is um, it, what, one other thing I've learned is is focus on your outliers too. Like focus on the data, but focus on the outliers because the outliers could be skewing your data. So focus on them. Figure out like why they're outliers. You know what caused them. Do, does something need to be solved? But also take a look at those outliers because that could, in fact, be skewing skewing the data. And you want to make sure to be able to explain explain those because data is supposed to tell a story, and it's frankly just not an accurate story if outliers are causing your data to be a little bit off. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Perfect. Well, any other insights that that the two of you want to add? Any final words before we open it up for uh, for a few moments of Q and A? I think my final words is is data is game changing. A lot of legal organizations have been in that black box and living in a world where you're constantly looking at your data truly revolutionizes how your legal department operates. So it's no matter how you get that data, I I think that as, you know, legal departments move into the the 2020s, <laughs> um I think having data to to know for your own purposes and then to be able to report out to your management team is is going to be an expectation um, going forward of how legal departments operate. Perfect. Great. All right. Well, we can um, open it up now to some Q and A. Um, and, and while those questions, if any, um, are, are being submitted. We'll just point out something that I, I recall Tim um, mentioning to me uh, is just that exactly what you mentioned, Jonathan, um, there's no place for legal at the table without data anymore. We just need that data in order to effectively communicate that value um, in, in that desired way. So great point. Um, all right. So I did see one question come in that was actually right in line with that um, discussion and point that you brought up, Jonathan. So I'll defer it to you. What have you seen to be the the, the data points that is most um, of concern and of value to your executive team? Yeah, so I would say the two data points. So if there's, I think they go hand in hand, right? It's the volume metrics. So total number of agreements that are coming through legal, and then turnaround times. Um, turnaround times may be even more important because to be quite honest, that's that's frankly the bottom line number. But I like to put them together always because you need to contextualize. You always need to contextualize your turnaround times against uh, the total volume of contracts. And I think that tells you how, like, how efficient your legal team's operating when you have those two metrics side by side. Um, and it also helps you become more strategic in how you're going to operate. You can start getting a sense of how many um, contract professionals, be it lawyers or legal ops or contract managers are working on agreements, like how much, what's the volume that each of them can take? Um, and what is the expected turnaround time, you know, with that, that, that bandwidth. And that helps you make sort of both sort of hiring asks. It helps you work with your internal legal team to make sure that you're hitting optimal efficiency. Um, you know, being strategic and creative, you could even start setting up bonus programs for your legal team to hit their, you know, certain certain service levels 
with a certain volume of agreement. But being able to have those two numbers side by side really does show you the sort of the level of effort and efficiency of your legal department. And to and to break up those two data points also by to add the extra level of context for how long each kind of contract takes, since most most of the times an NDA negotiation is not going to take as long as a, a master services agreement. Um, like what Jonathan said, to help validate hiring apps and ha visualizing how a legal team will grow over time, it really um, puts a spotlight on what's being worked on and where the team might need some help and additional resources moving forward. Yeah, that's great. Um, final question that, that I think we'll run, run through is a, is a good one to end on. Um, in in thinking about 2023 and all of the um, upcoming potential changes uh, to, to the landscape of the market and of the economy, are there um, certain pieces of data, whether it's efficiency or, or even substance of agreements that you think will be really important um, for, for legal ops and, and finance teams to prioritize? Yeah, I think just, again, I think sort of staying on those same metrics helps you show the work that is being done. And it it shows you that, hey, if we lose, you know, one one reviewer, this is, you know, the expected, this is the expected volume. So, I mean, you might want to look at some historical trends, but essentially what I think it's important is to understand what your resources capabilities are and sort of what their expectations as everybody goes to tighten their belt a little bit more. Um, I think um, from a terms perspective, I think folks are going to be looking at sort of the renewal terms, um, caps on renewals. Um, so I, I think it's going to be sort of varied by by which, you know, your which who, who, who your counterparties are. Um, but I don't think there's necessarily one specific term that folks are going to be focused on. I think there's it's going to be sort of each individual business, but ultimately what folks are going to be looking is, is sort of bottom line. How do we sort of keep efficiency um, within our org? And, you know, I think, you know, this is also one of those ones where usually legal is running at pretty, pretty lean. And so, you know, I think it's, it's, you know, it can be very instructional for other, other orgs that tend to have a little bit more leeway in hiring and don't have to run at the same efficiency levels that legal do. Um, I think it's also a good opportunity to sort of have that discussion with them of how legal, you know, what, how do these legal teams operate efficiently? Perfect. Great. Well, thanks so much, Jonathan and Brittany. Um, always a pleasure to just hear your wisdom and, and insight on the topic. Um, so with that, yeah, thanks everyone for joining.